Hi, my name is Simon Batzner. I'm a PhD student in Boris Kozinski Group at Harvard, and I'll be discussing neural equivariant intertonic potentials, short and equip. You can find the preprint uh, on archive under the link I posted here. So if we take a look at where we currently are uh, in the state of ML potentials, we can generally build potentials that are approximately DFT accurate. Uh, we can build potentials that respect the symmetries of 3D space. And we can build potentials that are size extensive, meaning we can train them uh, on systems containing M atoms, where M would usually be some number uh, that would easily be accessible via um, DFT or via maybe some quantum chemistry calculations. And then we can predict on structures um, containing many, many more atoms. Now, what's really missing from all of this is a principled way to go to beyond DFT accuracy. Now, while in theory, we can simply train on higher accuracy reference data, such as, for example, um, coming from coupled cluster calculations or from quantum Monte Carlo, the challenge that we're facing is that there's really a fundamental trade-off in our choice of regression model. On the one hand, we have uh, deep neural networks which uh, scale very nicely, um, but which usually require uh, massive training sets. Um, on the other hand, we have kernel methods, uh, which can learn very, very well from um, limited training sets, but um, which usually have scaling issues um, because they scale uh, linearly uh, with a number of training samples at runtime. So um, what we're proposing in this work is we're proposing to quip uh, a deep neural network intertonic potential that is very accurate, but also very data efficient, uh, while at the same time being scalable and fast. Um, and before I go into the details of how we do this, I want to give you a little bit of, a, of an overview of the terms of applications that we've tackled with this so far. Um, so we started with uh, small organic molecules, so things like uh, benzene, aspirin, toluene. Uh, we did liquid water um, and, and ISIS. Uh, we did uh, chemical reactions, uh, in particular um, a reaction um, on a surface. Uh, and we've also studied um, amorphous materials and crystals. Okay, so what is NEQUIP? Uh, in short, NEQUIP is an SE3 equivariant graph neural network. Uh, so what does it mean to be a graph neural network? It simply means that um, with every atom, we associate a node in a graph, and with pairs of atoms, we associate uh, edges. So if you're, for example, familiar with um, the Schnett architecture, Schnett is a type um, of graph neural network. Now, the key difference um, between NEQIP and existing invariant graph neural networks is that um, every atom uh, in our network not only carries a feature that consists of scalar values, um, but also one consisting uh, of vector values. So if you take a look, for example, at um, the atoms in this, in, this, in this schema down here, you see that all of them have associated with them these um, red feature values, scalars, but then they also have these uh, three blue ones, uh, and those uh, are meant to uh, represent um, uh, vector values. Uh, and then associated with that, the second difference is that when we run a convolution over neighboring atoms, uh, that convolution is now uh, not invariant, but instead it's equivariant to SE3, uh, and SE3 is the, uh, the group of translations um, and rotations in in 3D space. Um, and the way that we do this is by building on uh, the layers that were introduced in tensor field uh, networks, which is a framework for building these uh, rotation equivariant uh, neural networks. Um, and, and sort of to visualize this a little bit, here's an image of water uh, in a box in a, in a 2D view. Um, and what you can see here, these are scalar uh, features that are inside the network and you see that as we rotate the box, they remain the same, um, meaning they remain invariant under rotation. Um, now, on the contrary, if we take uh, the same system and we take a look at the vector features inside this network, then we would want that these vector features rotate with the geometry, um, meaning they are equivariant um, to rotations. Now, this looks very natural um, to our human eyes, but, but the, the thing to keep in mind is that this is actually something that's quite tricky um, to tell a computer about, um, that as you rotate the geometry, um, 
you would also want um, the, the states inside of the network to rotate um, accordingly. Next, let's take a closer look at an equipped network architecture. We start by embedding atoms based on the chemical species. We then pass these embeddings through a series of interaction blocks in which uh, the atomic features uh, are iteratively refined. Um, the output of those interaction blocks then gets passed into atom-wise dense li layers, an equivalent nonlinearity, uh, another dense layer, and then finally, um, the potential energy is computed as uh, a sum over atomic energies. Uh, to get the forces, we then uh, compute the negative gradient of that predicted energy with respect to the atomic positions um, by means of um, our differentiation. Uh, if we zoom in on the interaction, interaction block, we see that there's um, two tracks entering it. There's the L equals zero block, those are scalar features, and there's the L equals one block, those are vector features. Um, these then again go through another uh, set of self-interaction layers um, and equi equivariant nonlinearity, but most importantly, they enter the convolution, uh, which is the core of the network. Uh, and if we zoom in onto the convolution, we see on the left that we have these two uh, L equals zero and L equals one tracks entering. And then uh, very importantly on the right, we have the interatomic relative um, positions entering. Um, and, and those get acted on in two ways. So uh, on the very right side, we see um, that they get acted on by a small radial network. So we first compute the norm that gives us the distances. We embed these distances in a basis. And then we act on that basis with a very small, um, a very simple multilayer perceptron. Um, the second way in which they get acted on is through the use of spherical harmonics. Um, those two then uh, get combined and that forms uh, the filter. Uh, that then gets combined uh, via a tensor product with um, the incoming features. And finally that gives the output of the convolution. So the first data set that we benchmark and equip on is that of MD17. MD17 is a data set consisting of eight small organic molecules computed at DFT accuracy. And in particular, um, we're looking here at the subset of 1,000 training molecules. Uh, we compare and equip to SHNET, which is an invariant graph neural network, um, SGDML, which is a kernel-based method, uh, DimeNet, which is also uh, an invariant graph neural network, but one that also um, leverages two and three body information, um, and FCHL19 um, uh, with the Gaussian process um, model. Uh, we see that an equip consistently um, outperforms um, SHNET, SGDML, uh, and DimeNet, uh, where it performs on par with DimeNet uh, on one molecule um, out of the eight, and that it performs roughly on par with um, FCHL19. Uh, now, and this is very interesting because this is on uh, a very small training set of 1,000 molecules. Um, and typically, kernel-based methods such as Gaussian processes or kernel rich regression um, uh, are seen as more data efficient and, and are seen as um, models that would be uh, a better fit for uh, a small training set size. Uh, now, given that we, that we can get good accuracies um, on small training sets, we, we took an equip and tested it on small molecules um, computed at the CCSD or CCSDT um, level of quantum chemistry. Again, it's a data set uh, of 1,000 molecules. Uh, and again, we compare here to uh, SGDML, or a kernel-based method. Uh, and this time, mm, we see that we do uh, significantly better uh, than SGDML on, on four out of five molecules and do roughly um, perform roughly on par with SGDML on uh, the fifth. And uh, the reason this is interesting is because this means that uh, deep neural networks no longer require uh, massive training set sizes, but instead we can now use smaller training sets, which allows us to use higher accuracy reference data, such as, for example, as we did here, a um, couple of cluster data, uh, or potentially even uh, quantum Monte Carlo. Uh, the next data set that we benchmark and equip on is that of liquid water and ISIS. Uh, now this data set was um, first introduced together with uh, the DeepMD paper. 
uh, DeepMD is a type of neural network intertronic potential. Uh, and in that work, what they do is uh, they take this DeepMD um, potential and, and train it on a subset of 133,500 data points um, sampled from liquid water and, and different um, ice structures. Uh, and then we also train and equip uh, on this data set. Um, but the difference is we train it on only 133 um, data points. Uh, so a thousand times fewer um, training data. Um, and one data point here corresponds to a single DFT um, calculations for one MD frame. Um, and then m very much to our surprise, we find uh, that even though an equip is trained on a thousand times fewer data, um, it outperforms DeepMD um, on all four parts of this data set. Um, as a next test, we decided to move beyond just pure accuracy tables and um, compute structural properties. And on the next slide, also kinetic properties from um, MD simulations using NEQIP as the underlying potentials. So what we're looking at here is uh, the example of a lithium um, phosphate, um, in particular Li4P207 with 208 atoms. Um, and what we did is we trained it on 1,000 structures computed with DFT uh, that were sampled from an AIMD run in the melt at 3000 Kelvin. Um, and then we take the potential trained um, on these melted data and we uh, quench it. Um, so we run MD with it at 600 Kelvin. Um, and we did the same thing with AIMD and we compare on the left side the radial distribution function of the MD simulation with the quip to that of AMD, and uh, you, you see that it gets, um, uh, it, it can recover it very, very nicely. And the right side, high, right side you also see um, angular distribution functions, which are usually um, a bit harder to get right. Um, and you see on the top, the corner sharing angle, and on the bottom, the tetrahedral angle. And again, you see for both that we can recover them with very high fidelity with respect to the AMD simulation. As a next test, um, we take a look at lithium diffusion, so a kinetic property. And in particular, um, we look at the example of um, LIPS. Um, so this here is a system with um, 83 atoms uh, and, and one uh, vacancy. Uh, and we first train um, and equip models with different data set sizes, uh, 10, 100, 1,000, and 2,500. Uh, and you see that with 10, we already get a pretty good model. Um, and then with uh, 1,000 and 2,500, we get models that um, have uh, very good MAEs. Uh, and then we run molecular dynamics with that. Um, and as you can see from uh, the plot, we find that the uh, MSD of AMD and NEQIP um, match quite well. Uh, we then also compute the lithium uh, diffusivity and find um, an error, uh, a relative error of um, only 3% between the AMD lithium diffusivity and the lithium um, diffusivity as computed from NEQIP. Um, and as a small example, this is what uh, a, a, a simulation of NEQIP looks like in action. So this is uh, exactly this example of LIPS uh, at 520 Kelvin. And you see you have um, the phosphorus and sulfur atoms in um, yellow and purple, and you have the lithium atoms in red here. Um, as another application, we also see that we can model reactive systems with NEQIP. Um, so in particular here, this is um, a formate molecule on a copper surface. Um, and the training sets here includes the dehydrogenation um, reaction of that formate molecule. Um, in the table on the left, um, you can see the element-wise uh, mean absolute errors um, for the four species. And on the right, you can see um, an example of the dynamics.
In summary, NEQUIP is a deep learning method for building highly data efficient, QM accurate and scalable intertank potentials. The high data efficiency of our models allows us to move to beyond DFT accuracy and machine learning potentials. We've shown applications to a wide variety of different systems, uh, including organic molecules, liquid water and ices, um, catalytic reactions, amorphous solids, and um, lithium diffusion. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank Boris, uh, my advisor, uh, our collaborators, uh, Tess, uh, Lishin, uh, Jonathan, and Mordecai. I'd also like to thank the people who fund us and the people who allow us to compute. Uh, the preprinter is available on archive. Um, we will make coding data uh, public upon publication. Um, if you're interested in using Nequip, uh, the best way to do that right now is to simply shoot me an email. Thanks.